Okay, great. I stand up here today and I admit that I am terrified, but not because we have lost, but because I am standing across from a team that is okay with generations of death based on the circumstance of your birth and generations of hatred based on who somebody loves. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not good enough for them to hope and pray that something might change one day if we get development. And that is why we're winning this debate. Moreover, they have consistently failed to engage with any kind of principle, despite telling us again and again how we told you it was important, so we've won on that ground as well. But moreover, we say that even if this did just come down to tangibles, we won on that ground too. And this is why we cut um, we cut ties with countries where it is explicitly illegal, not just talking about gay, gay marriage, ma'am, but countries where you will be stoned if someone finds out about your sexuality. So the first clash in today's debate was in terms of what kind of change or what kind of effect do we have on the actual countries with homophobic laws. So let's just say that this motion that in order to win we did have to prove that we created some kind of change in these countries will win on that ground too. So firstly we told you that as a leader in Africa we can encourage change and set a precedent for it. We never got a response from that, other than that we could back them into a corner. To which we say, exactly, Desmond, that's how we get change. All they did further on from there was to suggest a counter-policy of some sort in which they said we should manipulate them. Ladies and gentlemen, we still don't know what they were talking about until something about economic sanctions imposed on South Africa in their reply. But even if they had told us before what they meant, they never gave us any mechanistic analysis to show how that creates any kind of change. A random correlation between better rights and development isn't good enough for you to win this debate. But moreover, we say that even if it works one day, we say we can create recourse now, even if we can't change everybody's opinions. And that's more important than waiting for generations to see if something happens. Even if you do win, that is generations of suffering. We say that's not good enough. Moreover, we told you that we have a responsibility to protect these people as a signatory of the Rome Statute, no response. Moreover, they then came and told us that changing law won't help. No, ladies and gentlemen. If we can change the law so that a government can no longer execute its people when they're found to be homosexual, we say that yes, that is a change. But moreover, we say that even if we can't always regulate what happens and we can't control every member of the police, we say that at least now we get some kind of recourse. We think that that's important. But moreover, their then last argument in terms of this was that we harm development in that country in some way. We say that firstly, that concedes that we have the power to influence their decisions. And secondly, they told us that people won't make the decision that it's not people won't make this decision between food and caring about homosexuals. So we say that works in the reverse. So we say that again, they'll choose food instead of hating homosexual people. So you conceded our case in that point. But moreover, we told you that even if it doesn't work in changing any law, we should act not just to better that country, but to better who we are as a country. And that principle had no response. So we won in that cash. But let's take a look at why we also won in the clash in terms of why it's best for South Africa. So we win on the actual grounds of this debate as well. So firstly, they told us that secretive manipula manipulation maintains constitution, and this was literally the only response to the principle in the whole debate. To which we say, no, the only way you can ma maintain that constitution and set a precedent is if people know that you're doing it. If it's a complete secret, you're not achieving anything, and you're not giving any kind of precedent or setting, taking an active stance in any way. Then they came and told us that we should prioritize South Africa. But they never really showed us how South Africa was harmed through cutting diplomatic ties, which was also an element of this debate they weren't willing to engage with. But even if it was just economic ties, we say that, no, we aren't dependent on the rest of Africa. If anything, they might depend a bit on us, so we can influence them, not the other way around. We don't suffer from cutting this tie. That doesn't make sense. Moreover, we told you that we need to make the meaning of our constitution something important, not something random. We say for our sake as a country, and we say for people, we need to act in this way. We think it's high time that we get off our high horse as we sit there and watch the plight of the people beneath us.